Hello viewers, in this session uh, we will solve some problems based on the theory that we have covered so far. I will write the questions okay, and uh, the viewer is encouraged to uh, solve uh, the question before uh, he or she looks at the solution. Okay. So, I will give a brief pause after each question and uh, try to answer the question yourself before uh, looking at the solution. Okay. So, let me start with this first question here. Okay. So, write the equation of a straight line in the complex plane without uh, using a real parameter. What I mean by that is recall we have written the equation of a circle as set of all z such that the modulus of z minus a is equal to r for some positive uh, real number r. Okay. So, uh, in the case of uh, a straight line it is possible to write uh, uh, the equation without using uh, any real parameter. Okay. So, uh, try to uh, solve this question and I will provide the solution here. Okay. So, uh, what we can do is I will first give you uh, the equation of the real line in the complex plane. Okay. Uh, the equation of real line in C is basically the set of all z such that the imaginary part of z is equal to 0. Right. So, it is a real number. So, the imaginary part of z is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is what I am uh, looking for. Okay. So, now let us try to see a general uh, straight line in the complex uh, plane. It looks like z equals, it is the locus of all points z such that z equals alpha plus beta t, where t belongs to r. Okay. So, any straight line has to look like that. This is the equation of a straight line passing through alpha and parallel to the vector beta. Okay. So, the viewer is uh, familiar uh, with this equation okay, uh, from geometry in the uh, in the plane. Okay. So, now let us try to eliminate the real parameter t. Okay. So, we do not want uh, the real parameter. Okay. So, what we can do is we can write z minus alpha by beta and look at uh, look at its value. We will assume that beta is non zero. Well, if beta is 0, we do not have a line here, right? Uh, beta is non zero. Okay. If beta is 0, we just have a point. So, it is a degenerate line. Okay. So, we will allow uh, beta not to be 0 and then uh, we have z minus alpha by beta is equal to t belongs to r. Okay. So, of course, the equation of any uh, okay, the set of all real numbers is imaginary part of z is equal to 0. So, uh, the equation of a straight line of this particular straight line is precisely the imaginary part of z minus alpha divided by beta is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is what I am looking for. Okay. So, uh, one can also try to write the equation of Okay, so, these are exercises write the equation of uh, an ellipse and a hyperbola in the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, once again try not try, you know you should not use a real parameter in the case of equation of a circle for example there are no real parameters r is a constant a is a constant uh, the only variable is z which is a complex number okay so likewise write the equation of ellipse and hyperbola in the complex plane without uh, using uh, real parameters 
ok. So, that is an exercise. The next question is uh, simple minded ok. So, it is about describing uh, sets geometrically. We have already seen such examples when uh, we studied the geometry in the complex plane ok. So, let me do a couple of more uh, simple minded example examples here ok. So, the, uh, the question is as follows describe the following sets in the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, the first example is uh, real part of the modulus of z is equal to real part of z plus 1 okay. and then the second set is uh, the set of all z. So, I said sets. So, I will write it in the set format set of all z such that this happens okay. and the set of all z such that z power n minus 1 is equal to the conjugate of z ok. So, try to describe these two sets geometrically in the complex plane ok. So, this I will present the solution here ok. So, the first set well we can uh, do this problem. Uh, analytically what I mean by that is we will uh, consider mod z. Okay. So, the mod z is equal to uh, real part of z plus 1. So, allow me to write z as x plus i y okay, and then I can use my knowledge of uh, you know um, the plane to actually come up with the um, description of the set. Okay. So, the modulus of z is uh, square root of x square plus y square when I write z like that ok and the real part of z is x and then plus 1 ok. So, this is what you are looking at. So, uh, square both sides you get this ok. So, you get y square is 2 x plus 1 ok. So, that is uh, the description. So, and we know that y square is equal to 2 x plus 1 uh, is a parabola. Let's see in the complex plane, okay? And you can uh, sketch this parabola, okay? So this is the uh, is a parabola, and see this is the description that I am looking for, okay? And uh, sketch it in C to describe the set, okay? So uh, the second set z power n minus 1. So, if you look at the set of all z such that z power n minus 1 is z conjugate. Okay. So, what kind of uh, points are in the set? Okay. So, then uh, you notice that what we can do is we can multiply both sides with z. So, we get uh, oh firstly uh, z is equal to 0 is definitely a solution. Okay. Uh, n here I did not mention. Okay. So, n here should be an integer. Okay. So, n belongs to uh, z n greater than or equal to uh, 2. Okay. So, n n can be made to be a uh, non positive non negative integer, okay. but the cases 0 1 are trivial. Okay. So, uh, I will uh, start with n equals 2. Okay. So, integers n equals 2. Okay. So, let us try to describe z power n minus 1 as z bar. Okay. So, z equals 0 is a solution. So, we will uh, keep this in mind. Apart from this, if z is non-zero, okay, if z is not equal to 0, then what do we have? We have z power n, we can multiply both sides with z. So, we get z power n is equal to the modulus of z squared. Okay. So, when z power n is modulus of z square, uh, so you notice that taking uh, modulus on both sides. 
So, what, what I am trying to do is that uh, well if two complex numbers are equal their moduli have to be equal at least. Okay. So, we get modulus of z power n is equal to modulus of z squared because the right hand side is already a real number its modulus is itself. Okay. So, what we get is that the modulus of z power n minus 2 is equal to 1. So, we conclude that the modulus of z is equal to 1. Okay. So, I can write z as e power i theta okay, for some real number theta. Okay. Then, uh, let me look at the equation again. I get e raise to i times theta times n minus 1 is equal to uh, e raise to minus i theta. The conjugate of e power i theta is e power minus i theta. Okay. So, from this uh, one can conclude that uh, theta power n minus 1 okay, and minus theta, okay, minus theta here, uh, they uh, are, they differ by uh, a 2 k pi, an integer multiple of 2 pi. Okay. So, uh, they differ by 2 k pi. So, this gives us theta times n, n theta is 2 k pi. So, theta is 2 k pi by n. Okay, where k is any integer here. Okay. So, uh, theta is an nth root of, uh, uh, I mean theta is 2 k pi by n. So, z is an nth root of unity. Okay. It is i times 2 k pi by n, k belongs to z. Well, k can be restricted to 0 through n minus 1 okay. and this gives us all the values of, uh, all the values of z. Okay. So, that is the solution to this. So, we notice that the solution set or this set, the description of this set uh, is a discrete set. What I mean by that is it is a bunch of points like that. Okay. Uh, based on n, it is just uh, a bunch of points, not uh, more than n. Okay. Uh, so, of course, 0 is always included in this set of solutions like we observed. Okay. So, that is a description of uh, uh, 2. Okay. So, let us move to the next question. So, the next question is as follows. Let zeta equal the nth root of 1, okay, a specific nth root of 1, where n here is greater than or equal to 2, n is an integer. Okay. Show that the product of uh, from k equals 0 through n minus 1 of 1 minus zeta power k z. Okay. So, the product of these n factors 0 through n minus 1, uh, 1 minus zeta power k times z, these are n number of factors. The product of this show that this is equal to 1 minus z power n. Okay. So, that is the question. Try to uh, solve this question question and I will provide the solution. So, the solution to this problem is as follows. Okay. So, uh, there is a factor theorem uh, for uh, real polynomials recall uh, that if a is a root of a polynomial okay, then z minus uh, or x minus a is the is a factor of a polynomial f of x. Uh, for real numbers. Okay. So, a similar factor theorem holds for uh, complex uh, numbers, complex polynomials as well, okay. although we did not prove it. Uh, if a is a root of a polynomial, then z minus a uh, is a factor of uh, the polynomial f of z. Okay. So, we will use that. So, if z power, uh, so you consider this equation z power n minus 1 is equal to 0. Okay. We know that uh, the nth roots of unity are precisely the solutions uh, or the roots of the polynomial z power n minus 1. Okay. So, uh, zeta power k uh, is a solution. So, uh, not only zeta which is mentioned in the question, but zeta power k is a solution uh, for uh, okay, to this equation. Uh, for 0 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n minus 1. 
Okay. So, you can you can put any other integer n, but it is going to be a repetition of uh, these roots for k belongs to z. Okay. So, it is going to be a, a repetition of uh, one of these roots which are present here. Okay. In particular, k equals 0 corresponds to uh, 1, the root 1 okay. and then k equals uh, 1 corresponds to the given root zeta itself etcetera. Okay. So, uh, but this is not uh, exactly what we want here, this would give us a factor z minus zeta power k, but this is not uh, what we want here. Uh, uh, so what we will do is we will observe the following. Uh, notice that uh, 1 by zeta power k, okay, uh, where k is in between 0 and n minus 1, k an integer is also a solution to the above equation. Right? That is because uh, well, uh, 1 by zeta power k raised to n minus 1 is equal to 1 by zeta power n uh, raised to k uh, minus 1, which is 1 by 1 power k minus 1, which is equal to 0. Okay. So, 1 by zeta power k is also a solution. Okay. So, what that gives us is that uh, it gives a, a factor. So, z minus uh, 1 by zeta power k is a factor of z power n minus 1. Okay? Where k, I mean this is true for all k, k between 0 and n minus 1. Okay? And so, we have got n factors for an nth degree polynomial z power n minus 1. What that means is, we have a complete factorization of this polynomial. Okay? Uh, so, uh, then z power n minus 1 uh, is now equal to Okay, because uh, of what I have said, this is now equal to the product from k equals 0 through n minus 1 of uh, z minus 1 by zeta power k. Okay. So, uh, these are all uh, distinct roots okay, that is also important. So, we have distinct factors and the product of these n factors, n factors gives us z power n minus 1. So, uh, now I will multiply zeta power k or I will clear the denominator to get uh, the product from k equals 0 through n minus 1 of zeta power k z minus 1 divided by zeta power k. Okay? So, now this looks almost like what I want, uh, but I, uh, but what I want here is 1 minus zeta power k times z equals 1 minus z power n. Okay? The product of them is 1 minus z power n. Okay. Product notice of k equals 0 through n minus 1 of 1 by zeta power k, the product of these denominators is equal to uh, e power minus 2 k pi i by n. Okay. I am just uh, substituting what zeta is, zeta is 2 pi i by n. So, 1 by zeta power k will be e power minus 2 pi 2 k pi i by n a product from uh, k equals 0 through n minus 1. Okay. So, this product will give me um, e raised to minus 2 pi i by n okay, times uh, I will have to add all these. Okay. So, I will get uh, 0 plus 1 plus so on until n minus 1. Okay. Because uh, in the powers these k's get added when I form the product. Okay. So, this gives me e raised to minus 2 pi i by n, the sum from n uh, from 0 through n minus 1 is n times n minus 1 by 2. So, that gives me uh, after cancellation, okay, that gives me e raised to minus pi i times n minus 1. Okay. So, now I will consider uh, two cases. Okay. So, case 1 when n is odd. Okay. Uh, this product uh, pi from k equals 0 through n minus 1 uh, e raised to minus pi i times n minus 1 okay, uh, is uh, or sorry when n is odd the product 
k equals 0 through n minus 1 of 1 by zeta power k is uh, e raised to minus pi i times an even number. Okay, so, that gives me uh, 1. Okay, so, uh, this product uh, z power n minus 1 is equal to uh, the product from k equals 0 through n minus 1 of zeta uh, apologies z power n minus 1. Okay. This is zeta power k z uh, minus 1. These are odd number of factors. Okay. So, when I switch each one of them to be 1 minus zeta power k z k equals 0 through n minus 1. Okay. I have odd number of these. So, I get a uh, minus 1 outside. Okay. I have made uh, odd number of switches. So, I will use the minus 1 to switch the left hand side uh, to make it 1 minus z power n. Okay. So, that is easy. Okay. So, this shows what we want when n is odd. When n is even, case 2, when n is even, the product in the denominator gives us pi k equals 0 through n minus 1 gives us uh, 1 by zeta power k is e power minus pi i times an odd number. Okay. So, this is minus 1. So, that leads us to uh, uh, 1 minus or z power n minus 1 equals uh, minus 1 times the product from k equals 0 through n minus 1 uh, zeta power k z minus 1. Okay. Now, these are even number of factors. So, when I switch them uh, to 1 minus zeta power k z, okay, uh, even number of switches uh, will give me even number of minus 1s which cancel and give me 1. Okay. So, this minus 1 on in you know uh, ahead of all these I will use that to switch the left hand side and write this as 1 minus z power n which still gives me what I want. Okay. So, uh, that shows uh, this problem. Let us look at the uh, following problem. So, let s be a finite set 1 prove that S is open if and only if S is empty. Okay. To prove that S is closed. So, uh, try to uh, provide the solution to this okay. and then here is the solution. Okay. So, I will not uh, really give the complete solution, but uh, give an intuition it is easy to see uh, either of them. Okay. So, uh, firstly S is a finite set it could be empty consider the uh, distances between all the points in S. Okay. So, con suppose S is non empty. Okay. So, consider uh, distances modulus of z i minus z j okay, such that uh, z i comma z j uh, belong to uh, S. Okay. So, consider these distances i not equal to j and there are only finitely many points in S. So, we can consider these distances, consider the minimum of these distances. Okay. So, let uh, so let me call the minimum uh, as little m, okay. as call it m, call it m little m. Okay. Let uh, epsilon be strictly less than m. Okay. Then, if I consider a ball of radius epsilon around uh, z i, then uh, the intersection with S is just the point z i okay. and so uh, the set S cannot be uh, open if it is non empty. Okay. And of course, if S is empty then it is definitely open. So, the um, 
opposite implication is uh, the, the converse of this statement is clearly true. Okay. So, that is the proof of 1 okay. and then uh, 2, uh, 2 is an easy exercise uh, show that uh, you know use the same principle okay, consider this uh, minimum of distances okay, and uh, try to show that each point of S is an isolated point okay. and so uh, S union the set of limit points is S itself because there are no limit points in S. Okay. So, each point is isolated, so uh, S becomes closed. Okay. So, 2 is an easy exercise. Okay. So, the next question is as follows. Okay. So, uh, prove that the limit as z goes to 0 of z bar by uh, z does not exist. Okay. And then uh, that is 1, 2 will uh, show that the limit as z goes to 0 uh, mod z squared by z is equal to 0. Okay. This is easy, it is very clear, uh, try to show 1 and 2. Okay. So, I will provide the solution here only to 1, 2 is straightforward. Okay. So, uh, z bar by z, well let us look at z bar by z that is x minus i y by x plus i y, if I take z equals x plus i y. Okay. And by multiplying the conjugate in the denominator, I get uh, x squared uh, minus y squared okay, uh, plus or maybe minus 2 i x y divided by x squared plus y squared. Okay. So, this is x squared minus y squared by x squared plus y squared uh, minus 2 i x y by x squared plus y squared. Okay. So, if z approaches 0 along the line, there are various directions in which z can approach 0. So, uh, z could approach 0 in any fashion that it likes. Okay. So, in particular it can approach 0 along the line y equals x, it can approach 0 along the line y equals 2 x for example. Okay. So, let us consider these two lines. If uh, z approaches 0 along the line y equals x, then uh, set y equals x in this expression. So, you get z bar by z uh, along y equals x is equal to x squared minus x square, x squared is 0. So, the real part is 0 and the imaginary part is uh, x squared divided by 2 x squared. So, this is minus i. Okay. And whereas, uh, along y equals 2 x z bar by z is equal to if I put y equals 2 x, I get x squared minus 4 x squared divided by x squared plus 4 x squared which is 5 x squared minus 2 i times uh, 2 x squared divided by uh, 5 x squared which gives me uh, minus 3 by 5 minus uh, 4 by 4 i by 5. Okay. And these two are clearly not equal. Okay. So, the limit of uh, z goes to 0 of z bar by z is uh, does not exist. Okay. So, that is an easy example. Okay. So, uh, the next question is about uh, continuous functions. Okay. So, uh, define f from c to c by uh, f of z is equal to z by 1 plus mod z. Okay. Uh, show that f is continuous. Okay. Uh, 1 to 1 and on to d b 0 1. 
Okay. So, the, recall this is a ball of radius 1 centered at 0 open ball. Okay. Show that it is on to B 0 1. Okay. So, the solution is as follows. Well, I will show that f is continuous. Okay. It is easy. So, 1 plus mod z notice the modulus function is continuous from C to R. Okay. So, mod z is continuous. Okay, uh, from C to R. In particular, you can uh, consider it to be a function from C to C, okay, uh, where R is identified with the real line in the complex plane. So, uh, mod z is continuous okay, and z is clearly continuous. So, z by 1 plus mod z uh, is continuous by the rules for continuous functions. Okay, so, is continuous for uh, every point. In uh, C. Notice mod z plus 1 is never 0. Okay. Mod z is greater than or equal to 0, and so mod z plus 1 can uh, is, is greater than or equal to 1. So, it is never 0. Okay. So, this is uh, continuous, that is easy. Okay. So, 1 to 1 is an exercise, that is an interesting exercise. Show this yourself. Okay. And then uh, it is on to B 0 1. Okay. So, why is this on to B 0 1? Firstly, uh, notice that the image lies in B 0 1, okay. because the modulus of z by 1 plus mod z, this is equal to mod z by 1 plus mod z, okay, which is 1 minus 1 by 1 plus mod z. Okay. And mod z, like I remarked earlier, mod z greater than or equal to 0. So, mod z plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 with equality only if uh, z is equal to 0. Okay. For any other z, uh, the, the modulus of z plus 1 is strictly greater than 1. Okay. So, 1 by 1 plus mod z is less than or equal to 1 with equality only if z is equal to 0. Okay. So, 1 minus 1 by 1 plus uh, mod z okay, uh, is less than or equal to. Okay. So, this is uh, less than or equal to 1. Okay. You are removing a quantity which is strictly less than or less than or equal to 1, let us say strictly less than 1 from 1, that will be strictly less than 1. And when z is equal to 0, equality holds here and then clearly uh, this number is 0. Okay. Uh, so, that is also uh, in B 0 1. Okay. So, all in all, uh, the image of this function lies in B 0 1. Okay. So, it is uh, it is definitely uh, contained in B 0 1, I mean f of c is contained in B 0 1, but is it on to. So, if w is a point in the uh, unit ball, okay. so uh, w uh, can be 0 in which case set uh, I mean f of 0 we know is 0. Okay. So, w is in the image of f. Okay. If w is non 0, it can be written as w is r r e power i theta, where we know that r is strictly less than 1 and we also know that uh, theta, well theta is any real number. Okay. So, uh, theta is a particular real number corresponding to uh, the argument of w. Okay. So, uh, what you can do is uh, m z by 1 plus mod z, if you write z as uh, r 1 e power i alpha. Okay, then we want the this to be equal to r e power i theta, this quantity to be equal to r e power i theta. This is nothing but uh, r 1 e power i alpha divided by 1 plus r 1. Okay. So, this can be written as r 1 by 1 plus r 1 times uh, e power i alpha. Okay. So, uh, definitely you can uh, find uh, a number alpha. So, you find a uh, find a z such that uh, argument of z okay, uh, there is I mean theta belongs to argument of z, theta belongs to argument of z that is easy there are many points to pick from okay. and then you choose uh, you know choose r choose 
and choose uh, z such that uh, r is equal to r 1 by 1 plus r 1. Notice r 1 by 1 plus r 1 is strictly less than 1. Okay. So, you can solve for um, r 1. Okay. So, r 1 times uh, r 1 times r plus r is equal to r 1. So, r 1 times r minus 1 is equal to plus r is equal to 0 r by 1 minus r. Okay. So, if you choose r 1 is equal to r by 1 minus r okay, and theta belongs to r z okay, that that z. Okay. So, uh, r by 1 minus r e power i theta is a complex number z whose image is equal to the given uh, w. Okay. So, definitely this map is on to. Okay. So, that shows this exercise. All right. So, uh, the next uh, problem is as follows. Okay. So, suppose that G is a region and that F is a continuous map of uh, G on to it is important on to an open set G hat. Okay. Prove that G hat is a region, it is given to be an open set. So, show that it is actually a region, which means you have to show that it is uh, connected. It is non empty is clear okay, because it is the image of a function okay, of a uh, image of a non empty set under a function. Okay. So, uh, it is definitely non empty, but try to show that it is connected. Okay. So, this is the problem uh, and I will provide uh, the solution here. Okay. So, let uh, A and B be two points in uh, g hat. Okay. So, recall what we have to show in order to show that g hat is a region, we have to uh, show that this points a and b are uh, connected via uh, a polygonal path. Okay. So, we need to demonstrate this path. All we know is that the pre images of a and b okay, in g okay, can be joined by polygonal path, because after all uh, g is given to be connected. Okay. So, let a and b be uh, two points in g hat and let x a and x b belong to g such that f of x a is equal to a and f of x b is equal to uh, b. Okay. There can be many choices you choose one uh, x a and x b. Okay. And uh, we know that x a and x b can be joined by a polygonal path. Okay. Polygonal path gamma which lies completely in g. Okay. So, uh, if you have a polygonal path which starts at x a and ends at x b, okay, you can always parameterize it. What I mean by that is you can write equations. So, that gamma of t okay, uh, is equal to any point on this path, okay, point on the path with gamma of 0 is x a and gamma of uh, 1 is x b. Okay. For example, if you have a straight line segment joining x a and x b, okay, uh, gamma of t can be x a times 1 minus t plus t times x b. t equals 0 gives us x a, t equals 1 gives us x b and any point here is on the straight line segment connecting x a and x b. Okay. So, you can extend this to uh, 
these kind of uh, polygonal uh, paths which are completely contained uh, in G. Okay. So, uh, the, the property of such a uh, gamma is that you can ensure that gamma is a continuous function. So, what kind of entity is this gamma? Gamma is actually a function from 0 1 to uh, the complex plane or in, in particular to G, because the image of gamma completely lies in G, the polygonal path lies in G. Okay. So, gamma is a continuous function continuous uh, function okay, gamma from 0 1 to g okay, such that gamma of 0 is equal to x a and gamma of 1 is equal to x b. Okay. Then what you can do is uh, you compose f with gamma. Okay. So, f circle gamma f is given to be continuous from 0 1 now the domain of gamma is 0 1 this is going to g okay and then g f takes g to g hat okay so f circle gamma is a function from 0 1 to g hat it has the property that f circle gamma of 0 is a and f circle gamma of 1 is equal to uh, b okay and uh, f circle gamma is continuous because it is the composition of continuous functions. Okay. And uh, so, so, using this f circle uh, gamma, okay, uh, what you can do is, um, you can, okay, so we can join, uh, we can join uh, A and B using uh, a path, a curve, let us call this a curve um, a little informally a curve f circle gamma. Now, f circle gamma need not be a, a, a path, a polygonal path, okay. but uh, once we have a curve joining f uh, one joining a and b, okay, we can correct it, we can uh, sort of uh, uh, linearize it approximate it using uh, using a okay so we can approximate f circle gamma using a polygonal path uh, in g hat okay the approximation comes from the fact that g hat is open okay so once you have uh, two points and then there is some curve uh, joining these two around each point you can this is a compact set because it is the image of a compact set 0 1 is compact in real numbers okay? and then uh, the, the image of a uh, con continuous image of a compact set is compact in g hat. Okay. So, when you have a compact set you collect all the balls of a certain radius Okay, and that, that forms an open cover of this path. Okay, and so, you can uh, by compactness you can choose finitely many balls okay, and then uh, those epsilon balls will cover the path, those finitely many balls will cover the path, the, the uh, curve f circle gamma. Okay. And within each of these balls what you can do is however curvy this is, however curvy f circle gamma is, you can correct it, you can uh, correct it sort of to be a polygonal path. You just pick a point here, a point here okay, and then uh, take the straight line for example, connecting these two points. Okay. And then now this point, the next point will lie in the overlap of, the, of this ball and the next ball and you can keep repeating this process. Okay. So, that is a polygonal path in G hat. Okay, and uh, that completes uh, this problem. Okay. So, um, we will see uh, more concretely paths and curves in the next uh, module, okay. uh, but for now uh, that, that is an explanation for this problem. Okay. So, next uh, we have the following question. Okay. So, derive the uh, Cauchy Riemann equations. in the polar form. 
what I mean by that is use the uh, polar coordinates to get uh, equivalent of Cauchy Riemann equations. Okay. So, your equations should finally, look uh, like the following. So, if f is equal to u plus i v, okay, f is a function of z, f is a function of x plus i y is u of x comma y plus i times v of x comma y. Okay. So, you can also consider if x plus i y is non-zero, you can also consider f to be a function of r e power i theta, then you have u of r comma theta plus i times v of r comma theta. Okay. So, there are partial derivatives u r and u theta and v r and v theta. Okay. So, use the already known Cauchy Riemann equations to establish a relationship among these uh, partial derivatives. Okay, so, that is the problem. Okay, try to do this exercise and I will present the solution here. Okay, so, uh, we know that well, dou u by dou r. So, I will use uh, chain rule on partial derivatives dou u by dou r which is u r here is equal to dou u by dou x times dou x by dou r use a function of both x and y. So, this is also plus dou u by dou y uh, times dou y by dou r. Okay. So, uh, this is a simple exercise in chain rule uh, for partial derivatives. Okay. So, this is uh, u x and then x recall is r cosine theta and y is r sin theta. Okay. So, the derivative of x with respect to r is simply cosine theta and then uh, this is u y times uh, the derivative of y with respect to r is uh, sin theta. Okay. So, I will write this as u r for short. So, we will preserve this and likewise uh, u theta is u x x theta plus u y y theta. So, the derivative of u with respect to x times x theta, the derivative of x with respect to theta is uh, r times minus sin theta okay, plus uh, u y times the derivative of y with respect to theta is r uh, cosine theta. Okay. So, u theta is minus r times u x sin theta. Uh, minus u y cosine theta. Okay. Likewise, uh, v x one can calculate is uh, sorry v r one can calculate is v x uh, x r plus v y y r which is going to be uh, v x cosine theta plus v y sin theta okay. and uh, v theta is going to be uh, v x x theta plus v y y theta which is uh, v x minus r sin theta plus v y uh, r cosine theta. Okay. And we will use uh, the fact that I mean we will use the Cauchy Riemann equations u x equals v y and u y is equal to v x okay, uh, uh, minus v x sorry minus v x in these two derivatives. Okay. So, using those what we get is uh, v r is equal to v x is uh, minus u y cosine theta plus uh, v y is u x sin theta. And notice from one of the preserved ex expressions, this is uh, minus u y cosine theta plus u x sin theta appears here. Okay. So, this is minus 1 by r times u theta. So, this is minus 1 by r times u theta okay. and then likewise v theta is uh, v x which is now uh, 
uh, minus u y times minus r sin theta plus v y which is now u x times r cosine theta is going to be r times u y sin theta plus u x cosine theta. Okay. And u y sin theta plus u x cosine theta is uh, u r. Okay. So, this is r times u r. Okay. So, the we have new Cauchy Riemann equations in polar coordinates it says v r uh, or minus r v r is u theta. Okay. This is from here okay. and then uh, v theta is r u r. Okay. So, these are the uh, Cauchy Riemann equations in uh, the polar form.